What is up guys, this is Jay here, Jay Media one and we're here to talk about the Nintendo Switch. Is the Nintendo Switch really all that? That is the question today. Nintendo Switch has some very cool features which we're going to go over, but basically this is my opinion on the Nintendo Switch and what I think about it. The Nintendo Switch is a very cool form factor. It's super light, it's super, super compact. As you can see, compared to the size of my hand here, the Nintendo Switch is not very large. Uh, this thing only weighs about a pound, pound and a half, so easy to carry, easy on the hands, easy to hold. Now, how does it feel with your hands on it? Well, if we hold it in this position here, you can see that my thumbs kind of fall right on the buttons here. So that's great positioning. However, if you look where the joystick is, my hand's got to go, my thumb's got to go way down here in order to reach it. So I have to either reposition my hand to get to it, or I have to go like this, which is not comfortable at all. The joystick on the right side, I think is, is just bad placement. But in order to get these buttons where they need to go, you have to put it somewhere. I'm not sure what they could have done better, but I will say that it's not comfortable to use. Now the joystick on this side, on the left side, where you can see my thumb now, is comfortable to use. It's in the right position. This orientation where my thumbs are right now is the right position. So if you're playing retro games like I like to do, I would rather see this analog up here with the buttons because then I can come down and use the Joy-Cons if I need to However, when I'm analog gaming, I have to be like this. So my positioning is off on this hand so I can use the analog. And my positioning is up on this hand so I can use the buttons. So it's kind of completely opposite of each other. It's not a major fail. It feels comfortable like this. But I have to get used to using the joystick for most games instead of the analog stick. And let's face it, the analog stick just works better if you're playing Nintendo games like Mario and things like that. That's what they're made for. Now the Nintendo Switch has a card slot here so you can put your game cards in here and you can still play the old game cards like that if you choose. I never do. I have a storage, uh, an extra storage drive on here which is a micro SD card that goes down in this little slot here. So you open this little door and you can see the micro SD card sits down inside of there. That's where you're going to pack all your storage because this thing only comes with like 64 gigabytes right off of the floor. You obviously need more room than that. We've talked about how large games can be. Even if you're retro gaming, you want more than 64 gigs. Uh, we have our USB-C. This is used to charge. <clears throat> it can also be used as an output so that you can display this on a larger screen. You do have your analog, like I said. It doesn't... It's not cheap, but it's not the best build design that I've ever seen. You have your minus and plus buttons up here, which kind of act like start and select, depends on the game. You got two bumpers on top, two triggers. Now there's not a lot of movement here. As you can see, there's barely any deflection. So if they don't move very much. Definitely not anything compared to the Steam Deck, which has a lot of deflection. It actually feels like a real trigger. These are like super short throws. Um, you have your volume rocker, so you can go up and down here, and your power button there. Your headphone jack, which is really cool, so you can plug in headphones. Most people use Bluetooth nowadays. This thing is Bluetooth compatible, so you can plug in a pair of uh, Bluetooth headphones. In order to unlock it, you just hit the same button three times, and it pops up. The home screen is where you're going to grab everything. So the home screen is your, your key screen. That's where you grab all of your data and information. As you can see, I have Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, and Nintendo already preloaded on this. I love those systems, and I like the fact that Nintendo includes this. These aren't ROMs. These aren't downloaded emulators. These come straight from the Nintendo store. And I do like that. That makes them super cool. Um, they don't have every game. You're not going to get a ton of games, but the games that they do have on the systems, they run really well, and they're efficient because they're essentially partied over from Nintendo who invented them so you have games on here like Mario Golf which was pretty popular you have uh, F-Zero F-Zero was super popular back in the day 
uh, Paper Mario, Mario Kart, which is one of my faves. Uh, we have Mario Tennis and Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64 was such a cool game when it came out because you had this like 3D environment that you could run around in. Prior to that, Mario was an adventure game. It was 2D, right? And so you can hear the, uh, if I crank the volume up how loud it is. It's got some good volume to it. It sounds good. And it looks just like the game. Now, you're going to see these black bars on the side because originally this was made for that type of format television. It wasn't made for, you know, super high-def TVs. They didn't exist. <laughs> so you have to keep that in mind. However, I don't find it distracting. I think that after a period of time, you just kind of get used to it. It's just kind of there. We're going to turn the volume back down. The, the screen is a touch screen, which is cool. So you can navigate that way. And... Uh, that's the way that I navigate on my menus mostly, but I don't always like to get fingerprints all over my screen. So you got the give and take effect there. As you can see the game loading here, you can see that it looks really good. It's just like the game that you would remember. Um, you do kind of use both Joy-Cons in this game to kind of move the camera around with the right one and then you move Mario around with the other. Uh, you got your basic jump button, your B and A buttons work well. Uh, this game has a lot of text in it, things like that when it first starts out, so probably not the best example, but the game quality looks good. It's uh, definitely worth uh, looking into if you like retro gaming. I'm big on it. I love it. I think it's the greatest, and uh, the games just aren't made like they used to be made. I think that the graphics and all that stuff is cool, but the games just aren't made like they used to be made. I just feel like the storylines and the characters were better back in the day. And that's just my personal opinion on it. That's what this is, is an opinion. Um, Nintendo, if you want that, you got to close the other application, which is no big deal. It takes a few seconds to close the software. It asks who's playing and then it loads it back up. One thing that I do find very cool about this is that the... Battery life lasts for about three hours or so. Like I said, retro gaming, you're going to get a little bit more time out of it just because they aren't as demanding. There's the original Donkey Kong for Nintendo there. You got the uh, Mario Brothers, the arcade classics, which is super cool. You got Ice Climber, Ice Hockey, um, some Pro Wrestling, some Tech Mobile. Tech Mobile was the super hot game back in the day. Super Mario 3, Mario Brothers. So all the cult classics are on here. And uh, like I said, this is all sanctioned by Nintendo. These aren't emulators. This isn't this is an emulator, but it's a Nintendo emulator. It comes from Nintendo itself. So you're not trying to download illegal ROMs or anything like that with this system, which is nice. Um, it's cool that they give you that option. There's also a huge game library on this. You got some other feature titles like City Skylines. This one you can play on the Switch, but surprisingly, I couldn't. I couldn't really play it on the Steam Deck. You can, but it wants you to play it like it's a PC game. And when I have a handheld in my hand, I want to use the controller. I don't want to use the mouse and keyboard. If I want to use the mouse and keyboard, I play a PC game. So it's just, it's just not good on there. This one allows you to play it with a controller. And it's really good quality. It comes through real nice. It's smooth. It's uh, got some good graphics. And uh, like I said, this game is on PC, but you don't want to play a PC game with a controller. So that's where I have a problem. It's not that you can't on the Steam Deck because they have trackpads on there, but it's nowhere near as fun when you have to try to move around a, a tiny little trackpad with two thumbs. This is so much easier and they could easily optimize this game. I'm not sure if there's some kind of license agreement with Nintendo on it for that specific reason, but they could license it to operate the same way on the Steam Deck. And you can see the, the controls are nice. The game quality looks good. It's a great, great display. You zoom in with the, the trigger button. This game is a high quality game. I highly recommend it to anybody that likes like SimCity style games. This is like SimCity on steroids. Let you do a whole bunch of extra additional things that you can't do in SimCity. And so you have that home button is really cool. It lets you go right back to the main menu. You can play. This one's specifically made for um, the Switch, which is the new Mario Kart 8. And uh, it's a fun game. 
I have just as much fun playing the old Mario Kart games. I like the original Mario Kart game, but I will say my top Mario Kart game is Mario Kart 64. Very, very good game. As you can see, it's not very big. I can almost cover it with my hand, so I like that factor. I like how easy it is to carry around, and I love the price. It's under 200 bucks. Um, Steam Deck starts at about 400 Of course, there's more stuff involved, but you can get a couple of these and play... Uh, play with your friends and your family and they connect back and forth to each other and do some other cool fun things it's just fun features you got your battery life indicator here and your wi-fi indicator tells you the time and then you just got your your page itself you can edit and you can edit your um, information there there's controllers here so you can pair your controller with it you can change the grip uh, the gripper order you can pair new controllers and find controllers Inside of here, you have a photo album. You have the Nintendo eShop. That's where you can buy all your games. There's some news. And then there's Nintendo Switch Online. Now, Nintendo Switch Online is cool, but it's a subscription, so you have to pay for that. And uh, some people just don't want to pay for more subscriptions. Some people have too many subscriptions. So you do have that option, and they give you some games with the online subscription service, which is cool. Nintendo's always done a great job. I, I want to see them last forever because they were, in my mind, one of the, the beginners, right? So you had Atari, then you had Nintendo. You had Intellivision and stuff like that in between them. Um, but Atari and Nintendo were, the, the, were the, the main ones that started it all. And when I was a kid, when I was a little kid, all I wanted for Christmas was a Nintendo. I think a lot of you can remember when Nintendo actually had... Um, the cartridges they had a front loading cartridge this is a terrible terrible design but it was a new system right and they had a door that flipped op open on the top and you shove the cartridge inside of there and then you had to press down which was spring loaded and then it would lock into place then you could hit the power button on the front or there was a reset button on the front the problem with this is the way that the cartridges were built the way that the the card would sit inside of the slot in the back would allow dust and dirt and things like that to get inside of there and mess up and screw with the video game. So there's different methods to how you fix this. Some people would take the cartridge out, blow inside of it to get the dust out, shove it in there. Some people would shove it in right before the edge and slam it down, and that would seem to work. Because what would happen is sometimes you'd put in a cartridge like you normally would, and you get this blue flashing screen, or you would get these lines on the side of your game. And then you have to smack it on the sides, and all of a sudden it would come back. Just a really, really weird uh, system on how they built it. Great system as far as the games and, and how it was ran. And that's what there was back then. I mean, that was the coolest thing. You didn't have a, a ton of choices. You had Nintendo or you had Atari. That was basically it. So I still have, reminisce about those days doing things like that to get my Nintendo going. And I still actually have an original Nintendo. And I enjoy it too, but it's just nice to be able to carry some of those games around with you. Form factor, A+, plus, 10 out of 10. The button quality, I will give that a sturdy 5. And that's just because it feels like some of these could be possibly 3D printed. They're not of super high quality like you would get on a Steam Deck. I'm not a huge fan of the placement. But... It's a tricky thing. When you're a designer, you have to figure out how someone's going to hold it and where to put everything. And sometimes there's just not enough room. And that's understandable. The display's okay. It's not the best display that I've ever seen, but it does get pretty bright. And it works well. And, and that's all that matters. When you're shrinking the display down to this size, display is not your number one goal here. Your number one goal is to just play the game. We used to play this on 13-inch TVs that were CRTs. The big, fat, bulky, square ones. So, for a display like this, it's, it's awesome. <clears throat> you didn't have this option it's inside the car on a, on a road trip. You didn't have that. You had Game Boy, which was a black and white screen on a big, big, bulky device. And you had to buy tons of adapters to get it to work correctly. Battery adapters, magnifying glasses, weird, weird stuff. But we, you know, kids nowadays have this, which is awesome. And adults. I mean, I'm an adult and I love it, so... The Nintendo Switch is great in those in those regards. Games, I give it an 8 out of 10 just because I think that there's some games that they could have snuck inside of here that they didn't, and uh, that's up to them. Um, there are some good games that you can download if you're into the newer stuff or the newer games. 
tons and tons of game options on here. It's Nintendo, of course. Um, as far as the battery goes, it does fine for me. I don't have any issues with it. Some people play with these charts. You can always get external battery packs. We have videos about that too. If you guys want to see, we'll leave a link. Um, external battery packs would work well. I even thought you could probably, there's a lot of room back here to where you can double-sided tape one of those battery packs to it, plug it in there. And then when you charge the device, you charge the battery pack and the device together. Gives you a little bit of an extra time. If you're playing it that much, it's worth doing. They make these battery packs super thin. You'll see our, in our video. Overall, guys, I think the Nintendo Switch is super awesome. And I will definitely give it a thumbs up to all my viewers. I think you all should take a look at this. I will leave a link in the description below so you can get your own today. You guys should check out jmedia1.com. That's J-A-Y-M-E-D-I-A-O-N-E.com for some cool merch that you can't find anywhere else. Like and subscribe to the channel so that you guys can see new videos that pop up. And we will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys.